Now, what is going on guys? Today, I quickly wanted to talk about this RESTful API and event guideline by Zalando. So this is like an e-commerce company. And this one is quite interesting because, you know, everyone can do like a REST API, but the question is, how should you design your REST API, right? Developing in a team is very different than developing for yourself. What are the best practices? What can you do? And I think this is one is a quite interesting take. So let's just quickly go through table of contents. And I would really suggest you like take a look at this and read through it a little bit. Maybe you find it educational. So here, let's look at the table of contents. Okay, the first thing here is, okay, you must use open API. Makes sense, right? Swagger, uh, good thing. If you want to share it with another developer, just send him like the swagger. Uh, and uh, then you have an up-to-date API specification. This one is also interesting, write APIs using US English. Makes sense, uh, especially also US English because that's like the default. And uh, yeah, meta information here, semantic versioning is important. So right, remember version 1.2.3, so major minor patch. This is interesting for compatibility reasons. So I think that's a very good piece of advice. Here, uh, secure endpoints with OAuth 2, that one is interesting. Probably if they're talking about server-to-server -server communication, they're talking about the client credentials flow. Uh, be reminded, I have a playlist about OAuth, if you're not sure what OAuth is. So I explain all the flows and everything in detail. Just uh, check out like the playlist section in my channel. Cool, and then there's some stuff about like scopes and not breaking like backwards compatibility. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, always return JSON objects as top level data structures. That one is also interesting, right? Because you could from an API just return a string or you could just return a number, right? So say you register someone and you, you could just return a number, uh, right? The ID of the user, for example. Uh, and what they say is, well, always return an object, even if you just return like one, uh, yeah, one thing, like an ID, for example. Yeah, don't use URI versioning. So I don't know if you've seen that. Sometimes people use slash v1 slash something and they advise against that. And I think it makes a hell of a lot of sense because it's very hard to manage like these uh, URLs. It's much, much better if you just put uh, the version uh, like in some header and then like your API gateway is routing like the traffic to the correct pod, depending on which API version you want to use. Yeah, then something about like deprecations and null. And what's also interesting is, and that one uh, is uh, I found quite surprising, but actually it makes sense. Uh, they always use um, like snake case for their property names in the APIs. So, okay, for enums, it's kind of standard, standard to have like upper snake case, right? But I also just read somewhere in this um, file here that they also use um, snake case for property names. So for example, instead of having first name in camel case so something like this they use first underscore name yeah you can see it here so this one is quite interesting because you might think yeah but why do you do that and i thought about it and actually it makes sense because a lot of the protocols that you see on the internet like for example uh, oauth uh, also uses like underscores and also a uh, problem json which is yeah, the closest thing that we have to a standardized error format also uses underscores. So, I mean, if you have like a camel case and um, then snake case mixed because you're using problem JSON or because you're using OAuth, that's kind of weird, right? So it definitely does make sense to always use like underscores uh, in all your properties. And this, by the way, also how GitHub does it. So uh, the standard way or like... Uh, something that you see very often is that people will just use camel case. So camel case being with, if, if you have first name, then instead of having an underscore, you would just capitalize like this N here. Cool. Yeah, so that one is pretty interesting. I think there's a, a lot of other different things in here. Also some recommendations about uh, status codes and um, uh, rate limits and uh, which uh, rest maturity level to use and which headers to return. So that is interesting and uh, yeah, I like that a lot. So maybe just take a look at it, um, read through it. Maybe you might not agree with everything that is in there, but it's just interesting to see like one 
big guideline like one the whole thing right because otherwise people tell you oh yeah do this or do that but here you see how everything fits together so these guys they really thought about um yeah how should we how should we structure our apis company-wide yeah cool so uh, yeah that's it pretty much uh, i will put the link of this in the description down below uh, thank you so much for watching leave a like and subscribe to the channel let me know if you find this thing like useful or if you find anything in there surprising would we'll be quite interested uh, about that cool so yeah uh, thanks thank you so much again and uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and also send me a tweet if you have a question so my twitter handle is at production coder Nice, so see you in the next video and uh, there we're probably going to do something technical again.